Collective Dear Family, at this time, could we please stand for prayer? Please follow along silently in a manner in which you are most comfortable. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the world, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, Master of the Day of Judgment, surely I am being turned to thee, O Allah, striving to be upright to he who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not of the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he in this of my commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king. There is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant, and I have been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all my faults, for none grants protection against faults but thee. And guide me into the best of morals, for none can guide into the best of morals but thee. And turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals, for none can turn from me the evil and the indecent morals but thee. And O oh Allah, make Muhammad successful, and make the true followers of Muhammad successful, as thou didst make Abraham and the true followers of Abraham successful. For surely thou art praised and magnified. And O oh Allah, bless Muhammad, and bless the true followers of Muhammad, as thou didst bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham, for surely thou art praised and magnified. I mean. You may be seated. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, we give praise and thanks to Allah for his gracious and wonderful appearance to us in the personage of Master W. Fard Muhammad. We are eternally grateful to him for giving to us his wise choice and the messenger Messiah and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And to the two of them, if we lived a thousand years, we can never thank them for enough for the man who is the embodiment of the two, Master Fard Muhammad and the honorable Elijah Muhammad. He is that messianic figure that walks among us today, dear family, in the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It is in their names I'd like to greet you all once again with the greeting words of peace. I salam alaikum. All praise is due to Allah, and for those who may not know what that means, that simply means peace be unto you. For as the Honorable Louis Farrakhan just shared with us last weekend, he said that the war of Armageddon has begun. Yes, sir. And if you are in a war zone, certainly the first thing you want in war is peace, because that's a hostile environment. I'll come back to that in a moment, but let me just first thank you all for being here. Thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to come and hear the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as represented by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And secondly, I'd like to thank you all for the submitting to the check procedure. For this is truly and honestly very needed today because you know you have people who will come into the houses of worship and shoot it up. People have beef in the street. They'll come in and see somebody, oh, that's so-and-so, I got him now. He sit, boom, and then it's, it's over. But see, we don't allow that in the houses of our houses in the Nation of Islam. We have the check procedure, and the only way you can get in is that you allow yourself to be going over because you have entered. Well, let me go this way. If you go to a foreign nation and you walk into that country at the airport, they can ask you to come into what's called customs. And we want you to empty your pockets, empty your bags, and we want to check everything on your person. That's if you want to enter the country. Well, we have a similar setup here. As a matter of fact, it's identical to that. This is a free, we are a nation. And there are some things we just don't allow in the house. So what we do is we check for things that aren't allowed, that we even check the spirit that you brought with you. Oh, you didn't even know that, did you? Oh, you, we, 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 we equipped with that. We check spirits. So if you are sitting in a seat right now, that means that you didn't have the things that we don't allow in the house, one. Number two, you had the right spirit. Yes, all praise is due to Allah. Thank you all for being here on time, in the seat, prepared to hear this life-giving teaching that is gonna be delivered to us very shortly by our key note uh, minister, regional minister, student minister, Rodney Muhammad. Dear family, um, as I was opening in that prayer, the opening prayer, it says, and surely, I have been greatly, not just unjust, I have been greatly unjust to myself. I can put my hand on my chest because, yeah, I'm, I'm in that group too. You're in that group. Yes, well, what, what do you mean I've been unjust to myself? Well, you come on now. 
We didn't been in bad relationships. Don't raise your hand. Don't make a face. I, we don't need, I don't need to know that. I already know. If you're here, you've been through something that's been traumatic in your life. And if most of it was by our own workings, right? We made that decision to be with that, that, that dude or that, that, that woman, right? That was our choice. And we knew because somebody, God spoke to us and told us they wasn't no good. It was called mama. Maybe it was ain't so-and-so. Maybe it was big mama, whoever, whomever it was. But what we, we decided, no, I know what's best for me. I'm not going to listen to that. Well, here, we're all here because we've all been damaged, sometimes by our own hands, sometimes by those that we come in contact with. But know of a surety, if we have been damaged, it wasn't happenstance. You know, the Quran said that we were made to face difficulty. Why do we have to face difficulty? You know, you hear people say, why me? How come I'm always going through that? Why not you? I mean, because God, Allah, God has positioned something in each one of us that we don't know is there. But only under the trial, the pressures of another sometimes, or a situation or a circumstance that he can bring out of us what he's deposited in us that we don't even know is there. Can I read it? Yes, you, you don't mind if I read a little bit, do you? I went to school. I mean, I can read a little bit. I just <laughs> might not be a, you know, an author and all that, but I, I can read this. Listen to this. This is Surah 25. Al-Furqan, the discrimination. Ayat or verse 20. And, saying, and we, we, we did not send before thee any messengers, but they surely ate food and went about in the markets. And we make some of you a trial, trial for others. And will you bear patiently? And thy Lord is ever seen. So that thing that we might, that beef we might have with a family member, you know, or somebody that's close to us, they rubbed us the wrong way, they said something, they did something to us, and we ain't called them in years. I mean, I mean, really, it's like that. People don't talk to each other. Oh, yeah, 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 you said such and such. And I, I don't appreciate that. Right. You don't talk to me like that. Because, you know, we put ourselves way up here sometimes. And then sometimes we drop ourselves down low. But when we got ourselves up here, sometimes we say and do things to each other that's, you know, not always good. So we rub each other the wrong way. But here in, in this reading, in the Quran, it says sometimes it's a trial. Well, who's giving out the trial? Who's the judge? That's Allah, right? God sets up trials for us. Why? Because in each one of us, as I mentioned just earlier, there's something in us that he's trying to bring out. So if you're constantly going through something, well, let me go this way. In the, in the Bible, it says that that which God loves, he chastens much. What does chasten mean? That means he's putting a whooping on you. He, he's putting it on you. I mean, he's, you know, oh, man, I just lost, I lost my car, lost my job. I'm saying my prayers. Why God putting me through this? Again, he's trying to bring something out of us. He wants us to become closer to himself. And sometimes some of us are a little more rebellious than others. Sometimes, we, we, uh, so the minister always shares with us, some of us will get the lesson from hearing the word, but the rest got to get the whooping. If you constantly getting whoopings, that means you ain't paying attention to the instructions that are being given to you. So dear family, I'm not gonna go any further with that. I know my time is up. So let's stick, just, just stop that right there. We're gonna hit the brakes. Thank you for allowing me to come before you. But what I would like to suggest to us right now, if you have a pen, a pad, a notebook, anything to write with, I don't think we're allowed to record on our devices, but you can write it down. Take it out, put on your thinking caps and prepare to write down some of the things you're gonna hear because you're not gonna get it all here. Something's gonna hit you like a rock coming through this, from this rostrum. When that rock hits you, you so caught up with what hits you, you will be writing it down and trying to retain it. The brother has said something else. So with that being said, let's bring to this rostrum a hard working soldier in the cause of Islam. He is our Delaware Valley student regional minister, Rodney Muhammad. Let's bring him on with a loving round of applause. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, the one God to whom praise is due the Lord of the worlds. We thank Almighty God, the revealer of all truth and the sender of all the prophets of whom we make no distinction. We thank him for Moses and the Torah. We thank him for Jesus and the gospel and we thank him for Muhammad and the revelation of the Holy Quran. As a student 
of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad's life-giving message, I'm most grateful to Allah for his own intervention in our affairs in the divine person of Master Fahd Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever. We cannot thank him enough for his exalted servant, a messenger messiah to us in the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And to the two of them, I'm eternally indebted for their student, servant, and apostle, our leader, teacher, and guide today, the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, a messiah to us today and the world. We thank you and greet you with the greeting words of peace. I salam alaikum. We can still say Happy Savior's Day, I believe. Yes, and we're thankful to Almighty God for a wonderful, wonderful convention. We thank the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for such a vision after a world pandemic that shut down the religious centers of the world. Uh, if ever there was a time that God told everyone to put on brakes and stop and reflect, it certainly was in the year 2020 because Jerusalem was shut down. There was nobody at the Wailing Wall. Um, Mecca was shut down. The square was empty. And Rome, the Pope, was preaching a mass to an empty square. God had shut the world down. I was looking yesterday afternoon at a film that came out in 1951, the day the earth stood still. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um, this man had come from the other planet to warn the earth about how we're living here on the earth. And when the professor was talking with him, he was telling the professor that this information I have to give you cannot be entrusted to one man. Mm. I need to talk to the leaders of all the nations of the world. And I said, well, that lets you know he's not God. Because the way God operates, that's exactly what he does. He entrusts what he wants the world to know with one man. Um, but they asked for a demonstration to put the world on notice. And so for 30 minutes, he neutralized the electricity on the earth and nothing would work. But after the 30 minutes, everything started running again. Cars, motorcycles, trucks, blenders, coffee makers and everything. And people just went right back to what they were doing <laughs> before the earth shut down. You won't get to do that on this one. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan may have delivered um, the last of what he's going to share with humanity and following his talk on Savior's Day, I noticed that the weather ramped up, the tornadoes and the snow, and it just wouldn't snow in places where we were waiting on the snow. You can tell people waiting on the snow because the Home Depots and the Lowe's and others, they got shovels and salt and everything, and they didn't need it. But the places where they didn't have this, 12 feet of snow unusual weather, uh, a God letting us know that he's in charge. So Savior's Day was about the war of Armageddon and the strategy for fighting the war is to put on the whole armor of God. So if those who are the righteous of the earth got to put on the full armor, then whether you want to or not, you in the fight. And armor 
is not for your sword that may defeat somebody else. Armor is so you could take a hit. And from what I can see, if the armor is designed as a defensive um, strategy, then Satan's blow to us is one we're not going to be able to duck uh -oh. and avoid. So we're just now trying to unpack what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has shared with us. And over the years, we have seen Allah's mercy, grace, and kindness to us working through him in an inexhaustible patience with us. And we might be at the end of that patience. Not so much that the servant of God doesn't have patience, but God may run fresh out of it. Jesus said the words, as it was in the days of Noah, and as it was in the days of Lot. He didn't name any other but those two that if we go back and review what they were caught up in uh, we would know something about the last day he said because so shall it be in the last day on the coming of the son of man we do know that in the days of Noah the book of Genesis says the earth was filled with violence on account of the corruption of men. Gun violence is not only visited among nations that are against each other as a theater of conflict, but our own neighborhoods now are riddled with it. And black men don't manufacture guns anywhere. I don't even know if we make the ghost guns, but we got them. So this kind of corruption to make a dollar makes sure that the guns and the ammunition for the guns keep getting to us. And we're, we're filling the earth with violence because a while of Satan is to manipulate us into activity that furthers his agenda at our own self-destruction. Um, so the, the armor of God says to me, we got to be furnished in a fast way with a knowledge that will help us protect ourselves. Because in the days of Lot, uh, as I was looking at Chris Rock last night, he was trying to tiptoe through what Lot had to deal with and remember Lot went into Sodom with so many believers that he and Abraham had to split up and he took some this way and Abraham went the other way and the Bible says and so Lot saw the cities of the plains and it reminded them of paradise and so they went down there but it also says there were evil men down there and they their abominations had reached unto God. Well, you know, if Lot went with so many believers, how come he only got out of there with his daughters and his wife turned around and became a pillar of salt? Obviously, whatever overtook the people who were once with Abraham, Lot fell into what Chris Rock was talking about last night, the cancel culture. 
that if you say one thing about any member of the LGBT community, you get slammed. You get fired from your job. You, you can't get a bank loan. You know, it's a cancel culture thing. And they, they see themselves as winning. Right. Right. But the Lord sent two people to Sodom that didn't give a damn about cancel culture. They were death angels. Don't say, well, they were some angels floating around because the men that were in the house wanted them. And they said, Lot, you have two men there. Bring them out that we may know them. So we're not talking about no ethereal beings. They saw men that they wanted to have a relationship with. And these men said, the Lord has sent us to destroy this place, man. Do you have anybody here that believes? And he went to try to get somebody. And he couldn't get nobody. Cancel culture had scared everybody. From standing on their faith. They didn't want to be politically ostracized so Jesus said so that's the way it's going to be in the last day on the coming of the son of man um, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan at best place to start right here he said the war of Armageddon as the final war of judgment and separation of the righteous from the wicked of which I am sent to teach a holy war or the war to end wars. He's quoting the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He goes on, he goes on I'm, I'm, I'm going down now because he's telling the preachers now you lack the strength and the courage to keep preaching what God has given you in the scriptures because of this cancel culture. Then he says, but you have to have the faith and the courage to speak the truth. Truth is the most necessary ingredient for our salvation. However, if you speak the truth, you're going to have to take a hit. Why else would you need the whole armor on? Huh? So he's telling you, you're going to have to have faith and courage to speak the truth. And if you don't speak the truth, it could cost you your salvation. You can't get salvation through a correspondence course. You can't get salvation on Zoom or TikTok. This God is requiring participation. And he's saying in order to participate and survive this, you need to put on the whole armor. A helmet of salvation says to us you got to be furnished with a knowledge that can defeat the knowledge that's coming at you that's false because this is dealing with the truth look what the minister says i think i got it here the spirit of truth will free those enslaved by the arch deceiver in St. John, chapter 8, verse 32, Jesus says, We shall know the truth, and the truth will set us free. Members of the Jewish community who were listening to Jesus respond. And they said, How do you say we shall be free? We have never we have never we have never been in bondage to any man 
Let's stop right there. Then if you've never been in bondage to any man, you weren't in Egypt 4,000 years ago. And the honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us there's no history of them being in slavery for 400 years in Egypt. This is a prophetic picture about a people who have been in bondage for 400 years that answer the seed of Abraham. That after our suffering and affliction for 400 years, God himself would come. So we got two things that are not in Egyptian history. They're not in the hieroglyphics or the metuneja. Then it, it, it's not documented on any page in Egypt. There was nobody in bondage for 400 years in Egypt and there's no record of a God coming. Did you hear what I said? And the people that the Bible is talking about from the days the temples of Muhammad opened is dealing with us and that God would come for us. Well, no, it says uh, he, he came to free the Jews from Egypt. Yes, and he would give them his name. Show me a Jew that took God's name. They wore the same name. How were you a slave and you were under your right name from the beginning? Huh? You don't fit the description. Let's just go through the whole thing. The MO and find out who really fits this profile. Jesus talks about Moses, but Jesus never talks about Pharaoh. Jesus comes to these same people and they challenge him on the law of Moses and he says, I've not come to throw away Moses' law, but I've come to fulfill it. Another time Jesus says to them, Moses God knew the hardness of your hearts. That's why Moses gave you such a law. Then in John, Jesus says to them, as Moses lifted the serpent of the wilderness, so shall the son of man be lifted. Wait a minute. If they were in Egypt in slavery for 400 years, why didn't he say when Moses delivers you from Pharaoh? And Pharaoh's people. No, he talks about another history, a hidden history that's no longer hidden now that the teachings of the honorable Elijah Muhammad is here. It's opening up the scriptures. The serpent of the wilderness are some folk that are in the caves and the hillsides that we name Europe after they got there. Well, what was it before that? West Asia. Then once you got there, we called it Europe. It says, now we call it Europe. Well, why you call it Europe? EU, which is in the news right now. EU is supposed to stand for European Union, and they capitalize it just like it is in our lessons. Have you noticed that? Hillside, rope is the rope that binds in. And they're, they're bound in there. European nations. And the richness that they have enjoyed is by colonizing the darker people of the planet. Now the colonies are waking up. And they have fought for their independence and a break with European nations now. And so these nations are struggling. If, if, you, if you notice them. Well, um, Jesus is, is saying a serpent was lifted. So when you uh, go into this history, you find out that these folks were unhealthy. The things that they were eating the ways that they were living were so unsanitary in these caves that somebody had to come to clean them up. And so Mosa was sent to them 
with strong law. To help a serpent can't stand up unless you put something that already standing for him to crawl up on. Then when he crawls up on it, he looks like he's standing, but he's leaning against something that's already standing. It doesn't mean he want to stand. So Moses brings um, knowledge and tools to wake them up because they got a job to do. And they have deceived the planet about themselves. Many of them don't know their origin in these caves. But I asked you, if uh, since I was in grade school, I've been visiting natural history museums. And you go to natural history museums, and this was called the prehistoric period. Pre means before. So you're telling us before history. In other words, we know you can't go there to check the record. And for a time, we couldn't go, we can check the record now. Because with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we have a history that goes back trillions of years. We can find you now. Are you following? We can identify you now. And so Jesus brought you up and he described Moses' work as a work of lifting the serpent. So when you go to the clinic or the hospitals, you will see the scepter of Moses' law with two serpents wrapped around it. Because we had to bring medicine for these folks living in this kind of environment. I went through a couple of Sundays before we left for Savior's Day that in the book of genes called Genesis, but it's born out of the word genes, you can see the genetic work that's taking place. Let us make man. How are you going to make him? In our image and after our likeness. Can you make him in our essence? No. Only Allah can do that. So they're in an image. They're in a likeness. But they're not in the essence. How do you know? Because when you get to the second chapter of Genesis. Another man is formed from the dust. And God breathes into that man. And that man becomes a living soul. The soul is the essence of the human being. But the man in the first chapter don't have a soul. Some kind of work took place that he doesn't have a soul. So he's in the image. He's after the likeness of the original people. In the old dictionaries. And you have to get the grandfather of English dictionaries. Recognizing that English is the weakest language on the planet. But the old dictionaries, you can look up the word pre-Adamite. Right. And the definition of a pre-Adamite is the people who lived on earth before the Adamic race. Right. Mm. It can't be just two people. And you populate an entire planet with two people. Are you following now? Adam and Eve get run out of the garden. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said they wanted to touch the tree of life. The tree of life was the nation of Islam. Right, right. Go ahead. Huh? The nation didn't just start. We had a nation. But it's back now. And when it comes up, the wisdom that this nation is coming up in is eternal. But the scriptures... The scriptures that lead us into the history of this nation, they are not eternal. They only last. Up to the resurrection, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, a man is going to have to take us through. So, um, Jesus wants to remind this people. Why is he telling this people as Moses lifted up the serpent of the wilderness? So shall the Son of Man be lifted. Because somebody's going to be lifted in the same way. But if he's going to do it the same way that Moses lifted the serpent of the wilderness. Then we got to go back and unravel that history. Right. And then we can see. Does, does what the honorable Elijah Muhammad go through. Does it fit what's in the scriptures. Right. 
And the minister said, if side angle side equals side angle side in geometry, then you can take our history in North America and lay it on the prophetic story of Pharaoh and Moses and God coming to Moses and delivering the children of Israel. And you can find our history right in there. So they tell Jesus, we ain't never been in bondage. Because this is not the group that they're talking about. God, God gives them his name. The, the, the Jewish people have no record of God coming to name them. Because they have no record of being taken out of their names. Any Jewish person that does not wear the Jewish name is because they did it to disguise themselves because they were being discriminated against and oppressed. We never knew our names. And if those names were were unsuitable to us and the only names that were suitable to us are the ones that our slave masters gave us i would care how many names master farad muhammad gave or the honorable Elijah muhammad gave we wouldn't accept none of them but we took them names right up didn't we yes, athletes actors and everybody is coming out now hardly anybody got a european name that's coming up now why are we so taking these names. It's a clean glass of water against a dirty glass. The other names don't fit us. So the minister is, why am I bringing this up? Because the truth is the most important thing to come today. Why? Because the truth will set us free. Free from what? Free from falsehood. Free from lies. Next to lying about God, the next biggest lie is they lie to us about ourselves. Yes, sir. Right. If we saw ourselves the way God saw us, we would not be in the condition that we're in right now. Um, we have never been in bondage to any man. So, I never would have saw that without the light of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the minister teaching it. I, I could not have saw that, but see, this is giving them trouble because they don't want you free. They don't want me free. And the minister knows somebody got to take on Satan. And there's a consequence for taking him on. I've heard him say that the original people who have no birth record will talk about us in this generation for an eternity because we would be the generation to bring down Satan's kingdom. So we're already slated for this fight. But in order to get in it and survive the fight, we got to put on the whole armor. So the helmet of salvation, this is a, when you're sealed in this knowledge, he can never come and take you back to a mystery God. A mystery God has not taught any of us. Well, God talked to me this morning. In what language? And what did he say? And what has he told you to do? See? Yeah, the minister's having a talk with us because there might not be an address after this. Only the retaliation of Satan, who I saw on one end trying to cover up that Farrakhan was even speaking till we pulled up what they were saying they were watching all of Savior's Day they start tweeting before it was over did you see them so the minister says here the spirit of truth will free those enslaved by the arch deceiver 
He goes on to talk about the war in Armageddon, but today's talk is just on the truth. The truth. The, the minister says here, the truth is the greatest thing in the universe. So truth is the highest form of reality. And you can't get no higher than God because God is not just the truth. He's the author of it. And the honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us when he created himself. Hmm. He created the earth simultaneously. Right. He was making a home for himself. That's right. That's right. So the earth and us have a close relationship. The stone of the earth is our bone structure. When people go to see old ruins, of cities that once existed they know something was there because the stone is still there put on one and the other when there was a living human being that once had flesh and sinew and they no longer living and they have dried up the bones are still there like the stone is still there isn't it without water out of which all life comes. You wouldn't have life on the planet earth. So the water that's in the earth is the blood of our body. You can be a 500 pound weight lifting whatever. But if you, if you lose all the blood in your body, you'll be a stiff, right? And you find out all that muscle and sinew, there was no life in that. The life was in the blood. And when the blood goes out, the life goes out. So like life coming out of water, you don't have life without the blood. That's coming out of the earth. You follow me now? The vegetation and the soil of the earth, it makes up the body. That's why we come from the earth and then we return to it when it talks about our going but we believe in the unseen right there's an energy that we can't see but that doesn't mean it's unreal are you following when you're at a janaza or a funeral the whole body is laying there right the whole body is laying there but there's no life in it where'd it go And when we bury a loved one, and we sure bury them, whatever was in them that animated them, that made them move, that made them do what they did when they were among the living, we didn't bury that with them. So where'd that go? See, that's why the Muslim believes in the unseen. Just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not real. Look here what the minister says. So it's the greatest thing in the universe because everything of Allah, God's creation, is the truth. He made nothing false. So anything come from God is not false. Right? right? Everywhere you look in his universe, you are looking at his mind, which is the birthplace and the dwelling place of truth. But you have to have the faith and the courage to speak the truth. Truth is the most necessary ingredient for our salvation. You know, and people want to know, what does Farrakhan have planned? We don't, we don't need a plan. They plan a plan, and Allah plans a plan, and Allah is the best of planners. We only need to submit to the one who already got a plan. Yes, sir. You want to mess up something, you go plan something. Right. While Allah already got this planned out. And this, what we're walking in now, it's been planned for trillions of years. If you look 
at what we believe on the back of our newspaper, you'll see point number one. We believe in the one God whose proper name is Allah. Now he's called by many names, but we say the proper name is Allah because Allah embraces all the beautiful names. That's right. And the messenger said, when you say Allah, you are saying all the beautiful names of God at once. And we'll talk more about that during Ramadan. But if you take point number one and put it in uh, uh, front of point number 12, you get 112. And when you go to the 112th surah of the Holy Quran, you see both gods. First you see one, he begets not. The one that the honorable Elijah Muhammad represented to us, he begets not. Think that over. He's not going to have children. Huh? Are you following me now? He's not producing somebody else biologically. The, 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 the life germ that's emitted from the male organ, that's, that's not how he produces his children. He produces his children from the wisdom of his mouth. And it finds its way into the brain of those that will receive his word and they can become a new creature. That's why he has you write a letter. And you write the letter in his handwriting. And after you write the letter, they say sign your name, but don't sign your name in your own handwriting. Yes, sign your name in his handwriting. Yes, sir. Right. Huh? Yes, sir. If you sign your name in your own handwriting, you don't even have to look. You know how you write. That's how we lived our life before we met him. We didn't even pay attention to how we lived. Right. We just call ourselves living our life. But once you write your name in his handwriting, you got to pay attention. Is that right? See, that's a sign now. In order to be, become more and more like him, you got to pay attention. There's got to be some concentration after observation. And, and if you're successful in your concentration to become more and more like him, guess what? He writes his nature right across your personality. You stay who you are in terms of your personality, but you grow into something and someone more powerful than you were before you wrote that letter. He's truthful because he gave us six lessons as the Quran says, the creation came about in six periods. So he gives us six lessons. He bringing in a whole new creation. And, and in there, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, he took the actual facts and wrote them out with his own hand and gave them to the messenger. Why didn't he write student enrollment out? Lost found lesson number one out. Why didn't he write these out? Why the actual facts? Because when you study the actual facts, those are the works of the originator. We put that one in front of that 12 to get one 12. We got a God who begets not. That's right. But then there's one who's not begotten. That can't be Fahd Muhammad. He was begotten in February 26, 1877. Come on, somebody. That's, right. We've been teaching, brother. That's the first one, the originator who's not begotten. He ain't got no parents. He brought himself into existence. He finds nothing in the blackness of space. And he brings himself into existence from dead matter that's there. He gives it life because he gave it a purpose. He makes all life after himself to have to have purpose in order to really feel fulfilled with your life. No amount of money, no amount of jewels and anything can help you. There's no drugs that can help you. When you don't live by purpose. That's why people who are materially rich are empty inside. What you doing killing yourself and you got money? What you doing destroying your own life and you can pay all your bills? 
Some of you don't even pay your bills. You pay somebody to pay your bills for you. And you're still killing yourself. You're still unhappy. You're still empty inside because you got no purpose. Why? Because the first one who started everything, the originator, he had a purpose. Why are you talking in Surah 112 about a God who begets not and then one who is not begotten? Because the Surah is called the unity. And the last one that comes, the one the messenger represented to us, he's in perfect unity with the first one that started it all. That's the process that he's using to bring the black man and woman up out of what we are in. We're not here to uh, destroy white people. We here to outgrow them. So the messenger said, no, you just accept your own and be yourself. That sound easy. But all our life we've been trying to be like white folks. We won't admit it to ourselves. Because we want everybody to think we're behind critical race theory. The 1619 Project eyes on the prize and everything but any people that are oppressed and they don't have something greater than the dominant culture that was over them they automatically acquiesce to the dominant culture and so now truth has come the most important thing in the universe and a man who can't afford for the truth to be told is tearing his kingdom apart so the, so the minister said, we crazy as hell, but we're still rising. We, this is the first time that we've questioned the children of our former slave masters in such a way that we question in everything they putting out now. And they going crazy because they got to readjust history. We're saying, no, this ain't right. Columbus did this. We want the statue down. We don't know what we want, but we know what they've been giving us. We ain't taking that no more. Huh? I mean, how did God end up in this? He's a made man. We're a created man. Well, how do you explain mystery God? He made it up. Why do you have a white Jesus? Now he's got a, uh, we, he done got pushed back and he has to go some because he had made it up. We question in everything now. We're questioning the cross that he's supposed to really believe in. But our experience with the cross, he burnt one on our lawn to let you know, nigga, we'll get you. Huh? That's our experience with the cross. He made it up. So what does he mean? We're in the mind of the, of the originator. As we get ready to close, look at this. You can't see the mind, but you can experience it to know that it's really there. Right. Right. Somebody had to think this out because if they didn't think it out, one year a chicken would lay eggs and the next year it'll just give birth to a chick. In order for chickens to always lay eggs and never go back to give birth some other way, it means a law was set up. You can't have a law without somebody thinking it out That's right. That's right. and figuring how it's going to work. You can't see gravity, but you walk off a building, you'll know it's there. Huh? Right away. Well, how did that come about? See, these fallen bodies and things. How did we know all you got to do is put a seed in the earth and the earth will give you back something far greater than the seed. There's a law already working. That's the mind of the originator and it don't stop. The earth is turning 1037 and one third miles per hour. It's making revolutions around the sun. Everything is doing what it's been doing for trillions of years. You know, something would have collided by now. So the white man is trying to tell us Big Bang Theory. 
but really we're in the mind of the originator. And anything that we're going to get to improve ourselves, we got to come through that law. There's a law where you can't be negative and get something positive. There's a law working. It ain't got nothing to do with anybody's opinion. You know, we're in a world where we've been so corrupted in our thinking, we think you, we can get a special hookup with God. The messenger said the only reason that the wider Christian faith, particularly coming out of Europe, got any power because they got a gun behind them. There's no universe working on their behalf. If it was, he wouldn't be up there trying to get a picture of it. He don't know nothing about that neighborhood up there. We're, we may be stuck in the hood in a food desert, but we're a cosmic people. If he wants to be free, he got to sit down, come up with a plan, get him some gun and some bombs, and get whoever got him in captivity. We just black. And we're hurting. And because we're the original people and black, our pain, so the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches, falls into a law that says once we are deprived and in pain from the womb of a woman. A child of destiny will be born. Come on. We just produce it. We don't have to go and make him up. You don't have to send him to private school. You don't have to do it. He can stay there and only go to the fourth grade. Come on. And, and what he teaches people will make them outgrow you and your private school. Just think of that. That's the power that's with us. We're a people of spirit and rhythm. Yes, so whatever he gave us, we took spirit and rhythm with it. That's sad worship they had. And the Lord said. And as Richard Price said, oh. He make these noises and everything. And, and. Man, black folks got that thing. It's, Lord, we want to be down by the rivers. Come on, Sister Sarah, sing that song. And it's cold language. We breaking up out of here. Yes, sir. And we're going to meet down by the riverside. Oh, we got the songs today. We done lost the message. Ain't nobody trying to break away no more. But our songs were crafted and coded for us to make a jailbreak. If you're going if you going to break out of a prison. The the first thing you need if you successfully get over the wall is a change of clothes. Cuz if you still wearing what they gave you. The first wawas you stop at, the camera got you. They know you belong back there at that prison. Huh? Am I telling the truth? So somebody got to give you a change of clothes so you don't look like you belong back there in captivity no more. See, there's a new garment for us when we come out of captivity here that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is putting us in. Lies put us in there. Truth is getting us out. Wickedness what's holding us in there. Righteousness is keeping us out. That's right. Clothing ourselves in the principles of the living God. It takes us out of the prison of religion. We don't get caught up whether you're Jewish. We don't get caught up whether you're Christian or Muslim. We're dealing with the principles that brought it all into existence. When you're talking to a man like Farrakhan, you're not dealing with a divider. You're dealing with a uniter. If our God came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, he did not forsake the originator. No, sir. That's why he's in the 112th surah as perfectly united with him. That's right. And everyone that will listen to that preacher of freedom, justice, and equality, we can unite with all of our people that are under every label and every religion. Yes, sir. 
So the messenger looked at Farrakhan and said, Brother, through you, I'll get all my people. That's right. That's right. So lastly, um, the minister says, did I have that here? Some things that I will say to you today, some of you will believe, and some of you, unfortunately, will disbelieve. Some of you will come closer to me and others will depart from me. But all of this is in the hands of Allah for the things that I say are the things that I must say to tell you what is coming. Yes, sir. To help you to prepare you for what is coming. That's my point. Prophets come in the absence of God like moonlight in the absence of the sun. But I don't come to you like that. No. I come directly from the light of the sun. Yes, sir. And so prophet is not for me. I come to fulfill that which you have read of your prophets. Mm. Now, the prophets always made sure that we know that the work didn't end with them. But they always pointed to a man where the work would, be, would end or be fulfilled. That's right. yes, sir. Somebody got to come. come on. And they can't come any kind of way because they got to make sure that you and I see that they're connected with the prophets. That's right. That's right. And any prophecy that has come. This is a truth that they don't want us to have. So the minister said... Uh, we're either going to be right or we're going to be dead. We're either going to be right or we're going to be dead. The war of Armageddon is to decide who will live on this earth. We're not even talking about whether we'll be free or not. The war of Armageddon is not about will we get all of our civil rights. Will they stop trying to suppress the vote? I mean, this, this is cosmic. When you talk about who's going to live on the planet yes, sir. or not. That's right. You can't live on an earth that was made for the righteous and think that you can continue practicing evil and God won't punish you and take your life. That's, that, that, too often, People take the warner as the one who's wanting to do harm to you when they're just bringing you a warning about the one that's got the power to do the harm. Right, 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 right. And every prophet suffered that, la that, that same thing. So uh, the minister is preparing us for something. Who are the Zionists? The Zionists are in control of Congress. Design. Many members of Congress are honorary members of the Israeli Knesset. That's right. The Zionists are not like the Jews who want to follow Moses. Don't package all the Jews together, the minister said, because there are some who are good and trying to do good. Right. Right. Elaine Furman was an accomplished Jewish violinist, but she worked with the minister day and night to help him prepare for those concerts. These, the ADL don't want you to see that. And they know with the concerts on Netflix, there still may be a lot of black people that don't watch them, but one thing they know for sure, the Jews are gonna watch them. And they don't want the other Jewish people to see Jews working with Minister Farrakhan and that he's probably not the hater that they've been painting him to be. You, are you following? And they want to drag. They want to drag their own people down. I read where Dr. King moved his whole family into an apartment that a Jewish person owned on the west side of Chicago. Many of the black folks on the west side of Chicago lived in unsafe, unclean 
housing, and they were being charged more rent than anyone for the same amount of space. Dr. King said in there, and these, these are his papers at Stanford University, he said, in 30 days, I saw a change in my children living under these conditions on the west side of Chicago. They snapped at each other. They were turning more aggressive toward each other in the home. Things that the Negro had never really seen in their children in the South. He said, within 30 days up in Chicago, I saw it with my own children. He said, so I called for a rent strike and told the so-called Negroes, don't nobody pay no rent. And he ended up getting called an anti-Semite. See, because they used that so that they, even though Stanley Levison was one of his closest aides, a Jew, who, who worked to help him do a lot of things that he was able to accomplish in the South. So Dr. King said, so the so-called Negro has to be aware that there are some Jews that we found mean well, but when you're in the North, you find the other ones. Right, right. He called them more rapacious. I looked that word up. I mean, just, just un obscenely greedy. And what they subjected our people to on the west side of Chicago, uh, which was one of King's last campaigns before he was ultimately uh, untimely killed. I'm bringing all this up because, see, the Zionists, they want a state of their own. So the minister said, so you're at home and some people ain't got nowhere to stay. And um, you say, well, I got a little room and you can stay here till you get on your feet. Now that I got some extra guests in the house, let me run out and get some extra stuff while the store is still open. And when you get back, with the extra grocery, they done changed the locks. Well, first you in disbelief. I know. You ain't changed no locks on me. Wait a minute, let me just try my key again. It ain't working. Now you're knocking and they won't come get you. So now you go get the authorities to tell the authorities at the UN they done locked me out of my house. They done changed the law. And the, the authorities are on their side. Right. Again, right. Now not only are you in disbelief, you about to go insane. Right. You trust yeah, you trust me. And look, so you just grab a brick, the thing, the nearest thing to you, and bust your, your window right. open. So you could get in there, they shoot you and call you the terrorist. Come on. And the minister said, I have just told you the Palestinian story. That's what they did to them. And these were the Zionists that did this. It was not all Jews, but it was the Zionists that did this. And then they went to set up their own state. Now, um, uh, it's, a, it's a truth that They'll try to use cancel culture to make you back away from that truth because the price is too great. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna close here where the minister says, so I'm asking the president, will he sign an executive order like Franklin Delano Roosevelt did against Elijah Muhammad to take him off the street because he couldn't stand his voice when America was prosecuting a war. And you know she's prosecuting a war. Three billion dollars have already been given to the Ukraine. China is getting more and more in bed with Russia. Why? because America wants to keep Taiwan and China wants to bring Taiwan back into its fold. Now we don't already read in the scripture, everybody gonna return to their own borders. So before Putin attacked the Ukraine, he named Ukraine and uh, uh, Lithuania and all of these, he said all of this was the Soviet Union before, y'all broke this up. 
So we're going to bring all this back up under our border and range. He attacks Ukraine with the idea that they're going to go back and get all their territory back. China wants Taiwan because it used to be a part of them. Are you, are you following that? So they're talking, they're talking war here. And I read where the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the war is going to start conventionally. That's a convention war we see now. But it's going to fast escalate into a nuclear war. And he said, and Europe is going to become a graveyard. Why? Because these are the NATO nations. And these NATO nations are going to end up fighting the Eastern European whites. Um, and obviously, we just sitting here. We can't declare war on nobody. If our God had not come and declared war, there'd be no war declared from our, our, our camp or on our behalf. Where I'm getting to is what they did with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, they took the Muslim's leader off the street and arrested him right. on some trumped up charges. Right, sir. And here you have a man, Louis Farrakhan, who'd never been arrested in his life, not for jaywalking, not for a speeding ticket or anything. So you know you're going to have to work hard to come up with some charges on Minister Louis Farrakhan. Now I just went through, he's talking about what's coming. And what's coming, uh, you and I will end up facing. I had a place here where he talks about it. Satan, men and women. Oh my God, he covered so much. They so upset and so afraid. But, but leave it to this. He tells us about the truth, that hard trials are necessary to establish truth, right. all right? If they're, if they're necessary, then that means that we have to go through a hard trial for the truth to even be established here now. He says, so I can't back you in a lie. I know what the real war is. It doesn't have anything to do with terrorism. That's the cover. Underneath that cover is a war against Islam. Underneath that cover is a war against Islam. So I want us to think on this and reflect on this. On Friday nights, as we're starting back our, our self-improvement study course, uh, for those that desire to come out and study together. Um, yeah. We've, we're about to take a hit where, that we can't afford to take a vacation on. It may look like you can take a break, but the whole armor says to me that you don't put that on for a vacation. I ain't never seen nobody in a fight where somebody let you take a break. That's what they need. And what we're talking about is getting distracted. And something else becoming more important than the real liberation of black people, which is about to take place on a scale that we never could have imagined. So I hope that you will come out in the weeks coming because we intend to share with you from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan the things that he has taught us that has led us up to this moment. I mean, we've, we, have, we have already seen his work. And we know, we know that a God or something like one has to be with him to bring about what he has brought about. Other people have had marches and you can see the corporations because they want their uh, symbols up. That they're part of the sponsorship club that helped to bring on this big event. But when it came to the Million Man March, we went in our own pockets. There were no banners. There was nobody that could claim that they had done it for somebody else. Black men did this together. That's the way it's going down in history. But we have to be the ones to write that history. 
And you can't write that history and leave Farrakhan out of that history. That's the wrong way to write that history. A God that helped us to bring nearly two million men there will forsake you and me if we deny him now. And that's what they're working on. They're working on us denying him. So we thank you for listening. We hope that you will be with us in the weeks to come. As the ministers say, it's going to be a rough ride. May God bless you. Assalamu alaikum. Um, we thank you all. We don't know who's out for their first time. If you've never been out with us before, but this is an opportunity for you. But if you're out for your first time, can we just see by a show of hands if you've never been with us before? Okay, thank you, beloved. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We, we try to share with you some of what we've been able to see into and extract from the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we are thankful for you being here as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has worked tirelessly to see you and I in a better condition. We just have not seen us successfully get to that better condition without coming into the formula that God has set for us to relate to him to bring about that kind of transformation. And so if you feel that what you're hearing is good for black people, for yourself, for your family, uh, how many of you would join up with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan now? We're talking the spiritual army. Don't go by what the enemies are writing. Ain't nobody shot nobody but him. We don't carry guns, right? We don't carry knives. We don't carry carnal weapons. As the scriptures say, our weapons are not carnal, but spiritual and mighty unto God for the pulling down of strongholds. The things that's got a stronghold on us, the word of God properly understood will yank them things right off. And that's the last thing that they want to see. They want us in a vice. Because in a vice, you can cut the thing and shape it any way you want to. So if, if we're caught up in the little vices and things that they're doing now, they all, the last vice was the vaccine. Yes, and, and, and now they got commercials. Have you gotten your last booster? They first told us to save your life. The vaccine itself would do that. Now you still getting jabbed and keep getting jabbed. And every, you got to keep going back and getting jabbed. And we don't even know if that's keeping you alive. And we don't know if it's all over. Don't think when the minister told us not to take it. That it's all right now because folks haven't fallen out. We don't know what that's going to turn into in the body over a period of time. What's it been now? About a year? About a full year. So we've got another year to go in that. But we, it was predicted by two, two years going on the third year. You're getting ready to see a mass something. And the minister said they laughed at Jim Jones. And they folks drank all that Kool-Aid and then... It turned out to have cyanide in it. And it was a mass murder thing that went on among them. And now these people have taken us out of social distancing, out of masks, right. out of everything. And they haven't said anything is all right because of the vaccine. Right, right. So keep the Final Call newspaper and you'll see five pages dedicated right. to COVID-19 and all the people that are weighing in on it. and. And keep in mind, there's a whole lot of white folks that ain't taking it. Trump told people not to take it, but he took it. You can't go with Trump because he don't believe in nobody but himself. Yeah, so, you know. But anyway, this is your opportunity to become a part of something now that, you know, it does more than make sense. It does more than make sense because if we challenged everybody to make some sense out of what the world's been teaching us, you'd be here till the cows came home. You can't do it. So if there's someone that's so moved today 
touched by God today, this is your opportunity to do it. We just want to shake your hand. We want you to come on up. We want to shake your hand. We want you to come on out and learn more about yourself. And look, if you feel like what you're learning doesn't work for you, there's no compulsion in religion. Nobody is trying to force anybody to join anything. But what do we belong to right now? And really, the state of affairs of black America, you can't afford to be drifting out here and don't belong to nothing. And not, you're not connected with any group that's doing something to better the condition of their own people. Okay? So, but we thank you for being out. And thank you for being a part. We, we want to hurry up and get to our, our public offering. And so we ask you to come on and sow a seed today. We have uh, the biggest business on the planet today in that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, all of humanity is in need of re-education and retraining. That's a big business. That's, a, that's, that's billions of people. That's a lot of work in, in front of those who are willing to help the man who was told he would get all of our people. Yes, sir. Come on now. So whatso whatsoever whatsoever we whatsoever we give, just let them know. And the secretary's table will take care of you. Do they have refreshments? I'm gonna let you do the announcements. They usually tell you what they have, if they have anything down. Uh, brothers and sisters, you know what what we're calling on uh, is for you to let co-workers, friends, and family know about what you can learn here. And soon we'll be reaching out to you on Wednesday nights as we deal with the murder uh, that has taken place, about 72 homicides already this year. Um, and some of, the, some of the killings now have reached the police department. And so you can, you can rest assured they're going to heighten it. We're in a time that people are running for mayor on the crime in the city. They just, they just had one uh, election in Chicago. And you see this woman lost. She only got 17% of the vote. She won. Chicago's bigger than Philadelphia. Chicago has 50 wards. She won all 50 wards when she first ran. That murder rate is, is, is over 800 going to 900 uh, in the city of Chicago. She only got 17% of the vote. And the man that used to be a school superintendent here in Philadelphia uh, is, is probably on his way to becoming the next mayor, Paul Vallis. And they're, they're, they're saying they're going to get crime down. And ain't going to be no thread and no needle. You can rest assured they're going to crack down on these neighborhoods. So it won't be a pretty picture or else you won't be able, you know, to get it down. Um, and the education that the children are getting is so weak in the public square, they're pushing it away. Because it's too weak to get them up. They're looking for something far greater than what they're being given now. It's not really the fault of the teachers because they just don't know. Everybody thinks that the model that we're using, which is from the 1800s, should still work in 2023. Um, you know, I mean, the, the new book is the phone. And everybody's reading little captions, but nobody's studying any real body of knowledge. Uh, you know, so we are a different kind of world out here. And since Allah's the best knower, that means knowledge evolves. So the educational system should be an evolving system. And whatever you use today, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be identical to what somebody used in the 1800s. Nothing works that you go back too far. This is why the messengers say down to the modern time. Okay, so brother, I'll close this out in prayer and let you know uh, what, uh, what, if anything, we have downstairs. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, thank sir. you, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Let's give him another round of applause, our Delaware Valley Shooting Regional Minister, Rodney Muhammad. All praise is due to Allah. Did you learn anything? Yes, sir. 
all pre that's all I need to know. I don't have to say any more on that subject matter. Uh, very quickly, the announcement that we have is that one, the war of Armageddon has begun. Two, we all we got, and truthfully, we all we need. Right. On the heels of that, let's stand for prayer. There are some beverages downstairs. That's what we have at the table. But stop, and there may be some other things that have been added. But um, let us close with prayer. In a manner in which you are most comfortable, follow along silently. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, the One God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the world, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, Master of the Day of Judgment, in which we now live, thee alone do we serve, and thee alone do we beseech for aid. O Allah, guide us on the straight path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, and not the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, and nor of those who go astray after hearing thy teaching. Say, He Allah is one. Allah is he upon whom we all depend. He neither begat nor is he begotten, and there is none like him. I bear witness that none deserves to be served or worshiped besides Allah, who appears to us in the person of Master W. Fard Muhammad. We are eternally grateful to him for his wise choice and given to us the Messenger Messiah and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And to the two of them, we are eternally grateful for the man who is the embodiment of them both and the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It's in those names we pray. I mean. Dear family, the meeting is dismissed. Go in peace. But remember, if we are aggressed upon, we fight with those who fight with us. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>